Hi guys, and welcome to my second presentation. So the first presentation, if you watched it, was on energy balance and fat loss um, and what you really need to know. Uh, and this one I'm going to touch on um, macronutrient theory and understanding the basics. So basically how you figure out your macros, which I know a few of you were kind of interested in. Okay, so before we get started, we'll just have a little recap over the last presentation that I did. So if you've not watched it, go and watch it. If you have watched it, um, some of this should make a little bit of sense. So as I said already, um, the first presentation was on energy balance and fat loss and what you really needed to know. So you need to understand the basics of energy balance. So the little image on the left hand side there with the little scale, you needed to understand kind of um, energy intake and energy output and how they were related and um, so as you say energy balance is dynamic ever evolving process so it's never it's never the same it's going to change day to day week to week and um, you need to know how to create an energy, energy deficit throughout the week so this will make a little bit more sense today when we go through actually how to figure out your um, energy expenditure so this is where it all relates together um, but the main thing that you need to understand was to find a diet, a strategy or intervention that you can adhere to. So basically something that you can stick to over time and that is basically the key to success. So um, moving on to today's lecture, what we're going to go through today. Um, so basically the theory. So what are macros kind of all about really? Um, and how does energy balance relate to macros? So basically to figure out the macronutrient content of your diet, you need to understand a few key points, okay? Firstly, you need to know how to estimate your energy expenditure. So if you're gonna try and figure out your calories, you need to know this. Um, you need to understand what BMR, PAL, and EEE are. So basically BMR, basal metabolic rate, PAL is your physical activity levels, and EEE is estimated energy expenditure. Okay, quite kind of convoluted, but It'll make sense as we go through this. Um, third thing you need to know is how to set appropriate calorie targets depending on what your goals are. Um, and then finally, how to set appropriate macronutrient targets whilst understanding that it's really kind of goal dependent. And there is a little bit of kind of personal preference in there as well. Um, and finally, just in the little grey letters there, is it really necessary when energy balance is so important? Um, we know I've spoken a lot about how calories are king, and hopefully throughout this you'll start to understand why the key. Because without it, you can't really do much else. So it'll make sense. So we're going to break this estimating energy expenditure up into three parts. Um, the first part we're going to look at is your BMR. So the first thing you need to do when you're trying to figure out your energy expenditure is you need to understand what your BMR is. Okay, now your BMR, I've already mentioned it, it basically stands for your basal metabolic rate. Now that is the easiest way I can describe that. So the easiest way to describe BMR is that it's the minimum amount of calories that your body needs to, to keep functioning. So stuff like breathing, uh, brain function, you know, all the really basic things. Now, there's a couple of different... Um, well, there's a lot of different equations. You know, there's probably six or seven that I can think of off the top of my head. These two here that I've highlighted, this Harris Benedict 1919 and the Met BMR method, these are probably two of the most popular ones. Um, but you can see the big difference here of, you know, the calculations in them. You know, so the Harris Benedict method really kind of a long-winded way of, of coming up with a number. You know, similar with males and females, the numbers are slightly different, so you need to make sure that if you do use this method, you use the correct one. Met BMR method, much easier to use. All you really need to know is um, your weight, and then it's very simple to figure it out. So what we're going to basically go through is um, how to figure your BMR out. Um, so here we go. So we're basically going to use me. So this little dude in the corner's me, roughly about the same colour as well, white as milk. So we're going to use both methods. So we're going to use Harris Benedict 1919 method first, and then we'll figure out our BMR using the Met BMR method. So firstly, what I will say at this point is 
you know, I'm not great at maths and I don't expect any of you guys to be really good at maths, but anything that's in brackets, so if we see with this Harris Benedict method, what's in brackets needs to be figured out first before you try and figure out the whole um, the whole kind of equation because it will skew the results a little bit. So just make sure when we're going through this that you do figure out everything in brackets, okay? So in the little red speech bubble there, you've got the information that you need. So 177 centimeters tall, I weigh exactly 78, and I'm 38 years old. Okay, so we're gonna figure both of these out. So like I mentioned, the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out what's in brackets. So here we've got 13.7 times 78, so my weight. And then in the next bracket, you've got five times 177, which is my height. And then you've got 6.8 times 38, which is my age. So you need to figure out everything that's in the brackets. So if you grab a bit of paper, grab a pen, pause me, figure all this out, and then we'll see if you've got the right answer. So if you just pause me, I bet you probably didn't pause me, so we'll go through it anyway. If you did, let's see if you've got the right answer. So if you add up all the stuff in the brackets first and then do the whole equation, you should come out with 17,061. So using this Harris Benedict 1919 method, so this is for males, not females. Remember, there is a difference between the two equations. My BMR is calculated at 1,761. Okay, so it's, it's fairly straightforward. It's just a little bit of a long-winded way to do it. So same thing, we'll work out the Met BMR method. So if you pause me again, try and figure it out. So you just need my body weight in kilograms times by 24. Okay, did you pause me on that one? This should be a lot easier to figure out. So basically you've got 78 times 24, and that comes out with 1,872. So between the two methods, there, there isn't that much of a difference. You know, the, the end result is 111 calories, and as I put, it's pretty much insignificant in the grand scheme of things. It, you know, it's just minor. What I would say is that for my clients, I use the Harris-Benedict method, but everything's on a spreadsheet. So all I have to do is just key in all the figures and it does everything for me. So it's it's fairly straightforward. I don't sit there with a pen and paper and figure everything out. Everything is done automatically. If someone comes up to me and wants to know straight away, I'll just use the MetBMR method because there is pretty much no difference between it. 111 calories is, is nothing. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part we're gonna try and figure out now. So we've done BMR. The second part of estimating your energy expenditure is PAL, so your physical activity level. Now this is basically just, it's a way to express your daily activity as a number. Um, and then once you've got this number, you can use that in combination with BMR to figure out your kind of your daily energy expenditure, your total energy expenditure. Um, what I will say, and I've put this here already, don't include exercise when you're figuring out this. Exercise comes after this, okay? So PAL is just literally just what you're doing from day to day. What's your job like? Are you up on your feet all day? Are you walking around? Are you sat behind a desk all day? You know, are you working on a building site really long hours and you are constantly shifting heavy stuff about? That's what this is. It's not including exercise, okay? So you've got these lifestyles. So you've got sedentary, lightly active, moderately active, very active, and you've got all these different descriptions, and then you've got these figures down the side, and these are the ones that we need to kind of keep an eye on. So we'll do the same thing as what we did with BMR. We'll basically try and figure out um, someone's PAL level. Okay, so just make a little note, just bear in mind some of these the lifestyles, the descriptions, and the PAL level, because we're gonna use them um, in a few more slides. So choosing the appropriate PAL. So when choosing your PAL, there are a few key points worth considering. Firstly, it's just a starting point. So similar thing with the BMR, and I didn't mention this when I was going about BMR. It's just giving you a figure to, to start from a baseline figure. It's not gonna be 100% accurate, so just see it as a start point, and if it needs to be tweaked, you can tweak it as you're going along. And as I've already mentioned, never include your exercise when choosing your PAL. That does come later on. And err on the side of caution. So 
you know, if you're looking for weight loss and you're trying to figure out your energy expenditure, if you put your pal really high, that's going to affect your figure at the end and it's probably going to be way out. So err on the side of caution, you're probably not as active as what you think you are during the day. So just bear that in mind. So we're going to use a little example here. Um, and I want you to try and have a little think. And I want you to think, we've got the example here. I want you to think about what pal would you choose for this? So this woman here, this is Stephanie. I can't call her Steve. Could I? So she's a mother. She walks on average 10,000 steps daily. So she probably walks her kids to school and then she walks to work. But then when she's at work, she sits behind a desk all day. She walks home, and then when she gets home, her husband does all the housework. She's very, very lucky, and she basically just flakes out in front of the TV and pretty much doesn't do anything. Okay, so if you just have a little thing, remember about that, the table from the previous slide, where would you set her pal level? So would she be 1.1? So sedentary, would she be 1.3? Maybe, she does a little bit of activity, and some light activity during the day. Would she be... 1.7 plus, which should be really kind of active. Where would you, just have a little thing, where would you sit her? 1.3. Okay, so you, hopefully you all got that one. So, like I said, it's fairly straightforward. If you do, you know, overestimate this, you'll notice it in your results once you've figured everything out, and it's probably going to be the PAL level that's going to be out a little bit. Okay? So, like I said, just bear that in mind. So the third part of estimating your energy expenditure. So we have gone through BMR and we've just gone through PAL. So now you've got to figure out your DEE. Now this is your daily energy expenditure, okay? And then the next slide will work out your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure. So DEE, I would think of this as, um, as a non-training day. So if you do do a lot of exercise and you have a rest day, this would be your rest day, okay? So this is just your daily energy expenditure. And again, this doesn't include exercise in this one. That's going to come in the total daily energy expenditure. So to figure out DEE, we've got our BMR figure and we have our PAL figure. So basically DEE is BMR times PAL. So it's relatively straightforward. Okay, so we're just going to figure this out. So we've got Stephanie here again, and she decided that she wants to lose weight. She weighs 70 kilograms but she wants to know how many calories should she be consuming. Okay, so if you remember, the BMR, when we figure this out, is body weight times 22. So not 24, because that was for males, this is for a female, so it's 22. So if you figure that out, so what's a body weight? A body weight is 70, and if you times that by 22, you get 1,540. So that's going to be a rough figure for her BMR. A physical activity level, if you remember this from the previous slide, it's 1.3. So to figure out the daily energy expenditure, so DEE, U times 15,040 by 1.3. So if you quickly do that, do it in your head if you can, you should get 2002. So her daily calorie expenditure is 2002 calories, okay? Now bear in mind she wants to lose weight. So she needs to be in a deficit, okay? So this 2002 figure, this would be her maintenance. So if she wants to stay at the same weight, this would be the figure that she should be kind of consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. But she wants to lose weight, okay? So if you remember from the, the first presentation, a good place to start is roughly in a deficit of about 500 calories. So we put 500 in. And then how do we figure out the target calories? We basically duck the 500 from the 2002 which gives us a total of 1,502. So for Stephanie to lose weight, she needs to be consuming 1,502 calories. Okay, so it's fairly straightforward. So you've got your BMR, times up by your PAL, that gives you your daily energy expenditure. From there, take off any deficit that you want to go in, and then you've got your target calories that you should be consuming. Okay, so it's fairly, fairly straightforward. Now it changes a little bit when you add exercise into it. Okay, so if you think of the previous slide, so your daily energy expenditure is being kind of like a non-training day. This is where we're gonna add exercise into it. Okay, so a natural part for most people when it comes to weight loss in particular, is that they start exercising. Okay, and you need to factor that in. 
So how does it affect our calculations? Okay, so here's the table again, but this time we've got an extra little column um, added in, or not column, a row added in, um, exercise estimated expenditure. So BMR is going to stay the same, 1540. A PAL, so a physical activity level, is exactly the same. A daily energy expenditure is exactly the same, but now I've got this exercise estimated expenditure. So like most people when it comes to exercising, what's getting very, very common nowadays is she's gone and bought a Fitbit, okay? And she's joined in an exercise class, and after the class she's checking a watch, and it's certainly she's burnt on average about 250 calories every time that she does this class, okay? So we put the 250 calories in the exercise estimated expenditure column. She still wants to be losing weight, so she's still got this deficit added in. So what do we do from here? So we add the 250 calories that she's burned. We add that to her daily energy expenditure, which will give you 2,052, 2,252, sorry. And then we take off from that the 500 calories, okay, which then gives us a total daily energy expenditure, so TDEE, -E, of 1,752. Okay, so you can see it's slightly higher on the days where she's training when compared to her non-training days. So on her non-training days, she's on 1,502 calories, and then when she is training, she can bump up her calories a little bit more because she can afford to, and she's got to be on 1,752, okay? Now, you, there's no reason why you need to add in your exercise. Um, you'll probably find that after exercise, you will be a little bit more hungry. So, you, you know, it's always wise to factor it in, but if you didn't, it's no big thing you're basically just going to be on a bigger deficit at the end of the week if you don't add it in, um, which when you're after weight loss, that's what it's all about. What I will say at this point, without going into too much detail, these um, kind of smart watches that are out now that you can get, these Fitbits, um, I have a Polar one, this um, Jawbone, the Apple Watch does it as well. They give, they're really good at counting your steps and they're fairly accurate at doing your heart rate. What they're not great at is figuring out your calorie burn. They're not overly accurate. So, you know, we've put here that 250 calories in, you know, kind of a 30, 40 minute exercise class. Is it going to be that much? It might be depending on what the class is. It might be a little bit more. It could potentially be a lot less depending on, like I said, depending on what the class is. They're not overly accurate when they're figuring out all the equations. So they're pretty good for, like I said, they're pretty good for, for measuring your heart rate. They're fairly accurate. They're fairly accurate for figuring out your steps, but they're not that great at telling you how many calories you burn. So just bear that in mind. Whatever the, you, you, if you do have one, whatever your Fitbit or your smartwatch or your Apple Watch, whatever it's, it's telling you you've burnt calorie-wise, don't take it as gospel because it probably isn't going to be overly accurate. But it just gives you a figure. So like I said, it's, and that's what all these are. They're all predictive equations, so they're not going to be 100% accurate. But they give you a baseline start point, and then you can work backwards or forwards from there, um, depending on what your goals are. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense. So you basically need to figure out your BMR. You need to figure out your PAL, so your physical, physical activity level. And then you need to figure out your DEE, so your daily energy expenditure. And then if you're adding exercise into it as well, you need to figure out your total daily energy expenditure, so your TDEE. So there's a lot of lot of maths involved, but once you've done it a few times, it's it's fairly straightforward. And once you've done it once and you've got that figure, you know, if it is weight loss that you're after, you can just keep working backwards um, and keep bringing the calories down and you're on to a winner. Okay, so now we've figured out how to... Um, estimate our energy expenditure, the amount of calories that we need, we need to move on to the macros. Okay, now, just very quickly, we're gonna go through this. So, macronutrients are basically nutrients that provide you with the calories or energy throughout the day. Okay, now there's three different macros. You're all probably aware of this. You've got protein, carbohydrate, and fat. The figures in brackets are what they're kind of referred to in, in research papers, and if I put anything on, um, in the group or you see anything I've put 
pro or CHO. This is basically what it means. Pro is protein, CHO is a short term for carbohydrate, not chocolate. If you do think it's chocolate, it's not chocolate. Basically, CHO um, is carbohydrate. So the C is carbon, the H is hydrogen, and the O is oxygen. So CHO is a, is a good way to remember it. Okay, so each macronutrient differs by the amount of calories it provides per gram, okay? And this is, you're going to have to try and remember this. So again, if you just grab a bit of paper, just make a little note of this because you're going to need this when we figure out what our macros are. So protein provides four, calor four calories per gram. Carbohydrate is exactly the same, so that provides four calories per gram. And then fat is a little bit higher, and that provides nine calories per gram. Okay, so protein, four calories, carbohydrate, four calories, and fat, nine. Okay. Alcohol is sometimes classed as a fourth macronutrient, kind of jokingly. It's not classed as a macronutrient because we basically, unfortunately, we don't need it to survive. Um, it's not a necessity. Some of you may think it is, but it's not. Um, but something to bear in mind, it is full of calories. So alcohol provides seven calories per gram. Okay, so it's a little bit more than protein and carbs, but it's less than fat. Okay, so just bear those figures in mind. So we've got some macronutrient guidelines here. Now, there used to be a time when percentages were used a lot for your daily intake. So, you know, to put here 15% protein, you might get 15% protein, 30% fat, and then whatever is left for carbohydrate. The problem with that is it isn't overly accurate, okay? But what they're doing now, and what you'll see a lot more of, um, and a lot of the government guidelines are going down this route now as well is everything's per gram of kilo weight, uh, per gram of kilogram of body weight. So you can get a lot more accurate when you start relating stuff to your body weight. So this table that I've put up here, so on the left hand side you've got pro, cho and fat, so protein, carbohydrates and fat. And then across the top here you've got health, endurance, strength and fat loss. And these are just some kind of kind of rough guidelines of where your um, macronutrients need to sit with regards to your to your body weight um, but you know you can look at some of them so if you look at endurance so carbohydrates for endurance you've got five to ten grams so there's, there's just a huge variant there and this is where kind of personal preference comes into it a little bit you know and if you look at the health of protein you know you've got 1.2 to 2 grams you know if you look at, well you won't do, but if you look at some research papers, they class, some papers will class high as 1.2, some class high as, you know, 3.6. There's just a huge variant there. So it's just something to be aware of. I think the government guidelines for protein is 0.8. Um, and that's generally regarded as being like the lowest of the low. You, you certainly want a lot more than that. So within research papers, and there's a lot more evidence that that really needs to be bumped up to 1.2. Um, so look at that as being kind of the minimum um, requirement for protein. Um, so as you can see, yeah. So this is, I've taken this from Joseph Agu, who is an um, elite nutrition coach, who put all this kind of work together. He brought out a lot of really cool um, charts that he did. Uh, and these are just, like I said, just some rough guidelines. So you can make a note of these. Um, if you need me to send you the slide and I can print it out for you, um, I will do, just let me know. So how do you calculate your macros? So this is where it's going to get a little bit complicated. So once you've figured out your TDEE, so your total daily energy expenditure, if you're using exercise or daily energy expenditure, you can use those calories that you've, you've got, so those target calories, you can use that or you you can use that, you need to use that to figure out your macros, okay? So here's our favorite Stephanie again. And she wants to lose weight. So the guidelines on this little chart here, these are the guidelines for fat loss, okay? The column next to it is just an example of what I've picked. Doesn't necessarily mean that'd be right, you can change this around if you want to, but this is just what we're gonna use as an example here. Okay, so if you remember on Stephanie's non-training days, her target calories is 1,502. So she needs to figure out what her macros are. Okay. 
And remember, she weighs 70 kilograms. So the first thing, the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out her grams for protein. Okay, so to figure that out, we've chosen two grams per kilogram of body weight. So we need to times that two grams by 70, which is a body weight, and that gives us a gram total of 140 grams. Okay, so for her protein, she's looking at 140 grams worth of protein. Okay, now to figure that out in calories, if you remember from the previous slide, it's four calories per gram of protein. So we times... 140 by 4, which gives us 560 calories. So for Stephanie, her protein level should be 140 grams of protein, which equates to 560 calories. So that was what she would need to track if she was going to track. Okay, so we did the same thing for carbohydrates. So again, we've got 1.1. This is her chosen, this is what she decided. She wants a little bit of less carbs. So now we figure that out, so we times 1.8 by 70, which is a weight, and that gives us a total of 126 grams. So within her diet, 126 grams of it is going to be carbohydrate. And again, we then figure out what her calories are. So to do that, if you remember, protein and carbohydrates have the same calories per gram. So we need to times 126 by 4, and that gives us 504 calories. Okay, so we figured out a protein level and we figured out a carbohydrate level. So now what do we do? This is where it gets a little bit tricky. We don't follow the same process to figure out the fat. Okay, bearing in mind her calories are set at 1,502. Okay, so this is what we do. We add together 560 and 504. Okay, so we're going to add the protein and carbohydrate levels together which gives us a total of 1,064. Okay, so we've added 560 to 504. That gives us a total of 1,064. Now from there, we are gonna take that away from the amount of calories that are her target for the day, which gives us a total of 438. So this is the remaining calories that she's got left over. And this is where our fat calories are gonna be set at. Okay, so we've gotta kind of work fat out backwards, okay? So we've got 438 calories of a fat. So now we need to work that out um, in grams, okay? So we know fat, um, the calories per gram level is much higher than what it is for protein and carbohydrates and it's set at nine. So to figure this out, we need to divide 438 by nine, which gives us 49 grams, okay? Hopefully this is all making sense. So we've got 49 grams of fat, and that's equal to 438 calories, okay? And then if we figure that back still, if we wanted to, to make sure that her grams per, per kilogram is sat within this, this guideline range of 0 0.5 to 1, we then take the 49 grams and we then divide that by her body weight, which gives us 0 0.7 which sits us slap bang in the middle of the guidelines. Okay, so it's a little bit of a long process, but it isn't that complicated once you know the figures. Okay, so we've chosen two grams, we'll just quickly go through this. We've chosen two grams per kilogram of body weight for a protein. So that works out at 140. We've then times that by four, because it's four calories per gram of protein. And that's given us a total of 560 calories. So that's a protein. A carbohydrate, we've set the level at 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. Again, you could set this higher or lower, personal preference. So we've times that by 70, which has given her a calorie grams total of 126. And we've then times that by 4, because it's 4 calories um, per gram in carbohydrates. And that's given us a total of 504. We've then added the 560 from the protein to the 504 from the carbohydrates, which has given us a total of 1,064. And then from there, we've taken her target calories of 1,502. We deducted the protein and carbohydrate from there to leave us with the 438 calories that she'll be getting from fat. 
And we've then worked backwards to the grams by dividing the 438 by 9 to give us the 49 grams. And we then worked it back again by dividing the 49 grams by 70, which is a body weight, to give us a total of 0.7 grams per kilogram of body weight. So this is basically what her figures would be. So if you were going to track in my fitness pal, this is where she would be set at. Okay, so hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, and like I said, the guidelines are there as a, as a rough guide. You can still tweak this a little bit. So on some days you might find that you've had a little bit more protein than what you were planning, but then you might have dropped your carbohydrate a little bit. You know, so it's, it's the end goal, the end figure that you need to look at is your target calories. The macros, it matters, but not not massively. And, you know, and like I said, these are these are just guidelines. They are just giving you a start point. Um, so if you have a little play with the table, with the guidelines, just do a few calculations. See if you can figure it out. Try and figure out your own. Um, so whatever your goal is, you know, if your goal is fat loss or, you know, you want to increase your strength, have a look at the guidelines, pick a little level of where you, you think you should be at or where you want to be at, uh, and then just see if you can figure it out. Okay, so that's basically it. So it's been another another fairly kind of good presentation, I think. Hopefully it's, it's kind of made sense. And from this presentation to the previous one, it, it, it should all tie in together. So just a quick summary. What do you need to know to understand the basics of macronutrient theory? You need to know that the predictive equations to use or use to calculate BMR, PAL, DEE and TDEE are just an estimate. They're just a start point. You need to know how to choose the appropriate PAL level. And like I said, just err on the side of caution. You need to know um, that each macronutrient differs by the amount of calories it provides per gram. Try not to get those two confused. So four calories per gram for protein and carbohydrates and nine for fat. And then the recommended guidelines for calculating your macronutrient intake are goal dependent. Okay, so just bear that in mind. If you, if, you know, if you go from strength and then you're looking for fat loss or you might be doing a road race, like a run, big long run, like a marathon, and then you're looking at more endurance, those figures are going to change a little bit. Um, so do just bear that in mind. And like I said, they are very much goal dependent. But most importantly of all, and this is where you know I keep harping on about this, you need to understand the role that energy balance plays. It is of huge importance. You know, you can't calculate your macros without knowing what your energy expenditure is. It's just, it's impossible. You know, so you get these people that, you know, they'll go on about, oh, I'm on 40% protein and I've dropped my carbs really low, so I'm only on 10% carbohydrate and the rest is fat. And, you know, and you ask them, well, what's that based on? And they, they just don't have a clue. They've just got this thing in the head that the macros is the most important thing. And it's just, it is important to a degree, but it's not as important as energy balance. You know, you need to understand that. You need to understand energy expenditure and how you figure out your calories. Okay. So hopefully that all makes sense. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to post them in the group once I've tagged this, um, once I've uploaded this video. Or you can also just drop me a message on, on Facebook or on email. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. Um, not sure what the next presentation is going to be. Um, I'll probably just put another post in the group. But hopefully you found this useful uh, and I'll speak to you again soon. Thanks.